Hello everyone and welcome to BHG Studios. In today's video we'll be doing an unboxing of the Bevis... Is this the right way? No. Here we go. Of this Bevis Gear Top Shelf camera bag. It is finally in full production and I do have a production copy here. As many of you have seen, I did do a sort of a first look of this bag, an overhead look of how this bag works and went through every sort of nook and cranny, but this was a prototype. So I was waiting for a full production copy, which is now available uh, online. I'll give you all the links and everything down below and there is even a discount code for you to use, but there is a, a decent discount on the bag right now. And I'm gonna really compare it against my Low Pro Pro Tactic PP350 that I showed in the other videos as well. This has been my sort of workhorse bag that I've been using for the past two or three years, especially when I travel overseas and I need to haul a lot of gear. So this is an actual uh, working haul. Like these things I actually did shoot another video with. So this is kind of when I come to the studio or I'm out on a shoot, I need to pull tons of gear. This has been my faithful handy dandy bag. But now I think I'm gonna switch over to this bag over here. So let's do an unboxing and then we're gonna to go to Studio B and we're gonna fill it up with everything in that bag, in this bag here. So let's start the video now. Spartaco. Now, Matt did tell me, so thanks Matt and Nicole, uh, tell me that the first batches of the original uh, pre-orders have already been shipped out and then people are still pre-ordering and I think the second and third batch is sold out. So they have more coming. I, I think I just checked right now online and I think they're taking pre-orders now for October. So the bag is doing very well and um, a lot of interest in it. So let's open this up. And if you're used to the quality of bags like Peak Design, you're getting similar sort of build quality in here as well. You can go to the website and look at all the specs of the bag. And again, I did go over it in my previous video, but here we go. And look at that. Oh, did I did I get a camo version? I, I, I think this is, I think I got the camo version, which is very cool. And the material feels a little different from the prototype version but I'm gonna just look at it as if I've never seen this bag before, but so far so good. So one of the things I like about the low pro bag as well as this bag is I prefer bags where you can access everything from the back because especially when you're traveling, you want to keep your gear safe. And the, one of the cool things about this bag is it has this push button style. They use it in sports car racing to keep the hood down. And here you go. And so you got a little welcome card here and here's Matt and his sister Nicole. So thank you guys again for sending this out to me and allow me to work with you guys. And as Matt promised, they would give extra dividers. And that was sort of one of the critiques I did have about the prototype. I said to Matt that, you know, I wish there was more dividers and I'm glad that he did include those. I'm really glad to see all that extra work put into it. And as well, he did strengthen up the space where a lot of people are worried about perhaps scratching their gear, but there's almost no way. This top lid here, they actually made this thicker than the prototype model. And so um, there's extra protection here and extra dividers here. And so looks great. And in fact, Matt was saying that this is this button is so strong that himself personally, he doesn't even zipper this up. There was another critique that uh, why wasn't this a, a double zipper type bag so that you can choose which way is that when you are doing the top shelf and you kind of from sling and you swing it forward, um, Matt was saying that if you had double and you have this on the wrong side, which is up top here, it actually gets in the way of you swinging over. So that was one of the reasons. Another thing here is uh, this little quick access release here. Um, I was I was using it like in this mode when it was on my back. And Matt says that you can, that it actually wasn't designed to carry the full weight of a backpack with this lock. You're supposed to keep this unlocked and then you adjust the cables according to your shoulders. And then when you want to put this in the sling mode, which means this side locks in and now you're only using the one strap. So it's basically in, in sling mode like this. That's when you use that little lockup feature to keep this sort of tight and out of the way. So that was one of the mistakes that I made. And if I remember other things that Matt had told me, he dropped this off like to my studio and it was like in the middle of the night, so. And so let's um, move over to Studio B and we're gonna transfer everything that's in the Low Pro Pro Tactic and move it over to the top shelf bag over here. So let's, let's go there now and do it. 
All right, guys, so I am in Studio B here, Low Pro Pro Tactic BP350. I love this bag, it's a great travel bag, well designed, well built. And like the top shelf, it does have the back entry, which I really like. And so you can see how much stuff I can put in here. Lots of ways of organizing with different types of dividers. I do like that this bag gives different color dividers. In fact, this one here, these orange ones are designed to, well, first of all, there's even a little space and you can put like SD cards or batteries or something, but they're also designed where you can actually have it as sort of like a top cover like that. So you can put stuff underneath that's loose and you can either access it or if you want to put another thing on top, like I don't know if you want to put something like that. So I actually do like these dividers and I may move some of these dividers over to the top shelf. Another thing I like about this is, I think more camera bags should do this, is having, no matter how dark the outside of the bag is, I like black bags, but on the inside, when you use light gray and orange, it's a lot easier to see. If you have black gear, which most camera gears are black, as you can see, most of this is all black, and it's inside a, a black compartment with black dividers, sometimes you can lose things, like, you know, something like this, black on black on black, and you might not be able to actually immediately see it but uh, overall I do like this bag um, but the problem is like most of these bags is you have to put them on the ground or on a chair or something when you're out and about and oftentimes when I'm in a city like Hong Kong what I actually do is uh, I do take this little rain guard here wrap it along the front and then when I put this on the ground you know, I'm only getting this dirty, which I can kind of wipe clean. And this is another thing is uh, people would ask, Matt, why can't you have a built-in rain guard? And it does actually affect the squareness of the bag. And you don't want little lumps on the top and bottom. And so that was uh, Matt's reasoning. So there's, they do have the rain guard kind of inside. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But anyways, so let's pull everything out of here. XT4, the 10 to 24. And then we have the 3514. And then we have the 16 millimeter f1.4. We have a Minolta 35 millimeter 1.4. You're sort of seeing a, a theme here. And this is the 18 millimeter f1.4, the brand new lens from Fujifilm. And then this is the six, uh, 56 millimeter f1.2. And then we have an XH1 body only. We have the X Pro 3 with the per gear 35.16. And we have the Ricoh GR3. And then just a whole bunch of small little accessories and stuff. This is a, a by Zaid made here. It's a double battery holder for the X-T4, which I'm using to shoot this video. And just little accessories, caps and stuff like that. So anyways, this is all the gear. This is all the gear that I had in the camera. Now that it's out, it doesn't look like a lot, but, but we're talking three camera bodies and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lenses and a point and shoot and some accessories. So let's uh, grab the top shelf. All right, here we go. So this is the top shelf in sling mode. And if you want like a full explanation and a detailed review, again, check out my other video where I go into like every little kind of nook and cranny of how and why things were designed. Let's move this out of the way here. And again, rear access, which I really enjoy. And then the push button access here. And let's just move this around. And here we go, as I mentioned, black on black on black, right? If you put something like this, if you put something black in here, it's really, w where did it go? So that's one small kind of criticism I have, um, that if this was a light gray interior, I think it worked out better. And I'm gonna pull all these extra dividers, which I'm really happy that Matt included all of these, so that's great. And then here is that rain guard that I mentioned that uh, Matt said that he didn't want to build into the bottom. Well, first of all, this actually has a tripod holder and different strap holders along the, the top section here and the bottom section. And so that takes up extra space, but you can see how big and puffy this is. And so it makes sense that Matt will put this inside. But for me, um, this is reasonably weatherproof. And so if I was traveling, I might put this in my luggage, but I don't always need it on because I don't want to take up an extra compartment just to hold this because I don't need to put this on the ground, right? I can actually use this as a top shelf access to gear without getting the bottom of this bag dirty. And so let's just move that out of the way. And so you can see here, this is the main large compartment. And you can see how this can fit in here. Now, Matt, the first time I met him, he had the, I think the Canon 5D and it fit in perfectly inside here. So this actually is a little bit oversized. I actually have room on the sides here to put smaller items in. This is the X-Pro3 with the 35 and this will fit inside 
here. And this is part of that side access here, right? So if I needed to get into from the side, I can unzip this. And here we go. So you can see the X-Pro3 this way. And my prototype didn't have this sort of a nice sort of protection. The Velcro was here. So this is nice and closed off. And so that if you have something in here, it won't accidentally fall out of your bag. So that's a really good design decision. Perfect mat and double zipper for the side so you can decide which way you want to pull these down but again for me i probably just kind of zap strap this shut so here we go and then room for another uh, body here i think this is probably the next largest space up here so i'm going to fit the xh1 up here and then now i've got just a bunch of lenses so um this could fit actually quite a large lens. This is, I don't have any huge lenses with me, but this is the 56-1.2 and this is the 18-1.4. Uh, I don't think I can fit both of them in here, but I could probably fit one like that and then use this extra divider and probably actually I'll put this on the bottom here and use this extra divider. I could probably fit one more lens, like a smaller lens over here although it would make access to this lens a little bit more difficult because there is a bit of a lip all throughout here so maybe um let me see here even this 35 one 35 one four minerals that fits there perfectly there's another little spot here and then here is the 56 one two and right here is the 18 one four this could actually fit right next to this uh this little pin but some people may be anxious right and say no i don't want to put something like this lens, even if you accidentally bump it against this pin, so you can see that pin there, and you can see where the 1814 fits, and it's fine. Like again, the this top here is well padded, and I think Matt had said that they had made this even thicker than the prototype. So as it shuts, you see it is safe, but let's just say I don't feel that it is safe. So it's safe up in that corner, and then you know, like I said, there is actually extra space in here. I can actually fit the GR3 over here. Or if I want to, I can actually just fit it over here, but I think it does fit better. Um, let's just say it'll fit right here, no problem. And I still have this big section here where I can put all this loosey-goosey stuff, like the batteries and all the different caps and stuff. So I can fit all that in here. But then as I mentioned, you may be worried that stuff like this might kind of flop around. So either use another one of these dividers and put it as a cap like that, right? So now it's covered like that. So it's underneath here, okay? And then we still have this uh, 3514. So where is this gonna fit? Um, again, there's space here, but then you have to worry about about the, the camera body. So I'm gonna maybe use another one of these extra spacers, put it over here, and now the 35, one four fits in here. Now everything that was inside the BP350 clearly fits easily in here and even with the space of this lens here, I can decide to put this over here and then we close this up. All fits. And there is a, a little side section here. In here is where you will fit your laptop and things like that. So let me just grab my laptop. And this is a nice like a felt material. So this is my MacBook Pro 13 inch. Let's just grab this. And it fits nicely in there. And there's still room, extra room, the little little zippered section. Often I'll put filters and stuff in here. And then another little shallow section here that you can put things like even your wallet and stuff like that. And it's kind of a hidden section because once it's just shut like this, it's hard to tell. There's a little section here. And then we have these two front pockets but it is it's basically flat right and that makes sense because again this is a top shelf design the top here has to be flat if this was all lumpy and stuff like that it's hard to put it down like this even though when it's in top shelf mode it's not leading up against anything so this is the design of the bag everything fits nicely if you need to put other items in here you can and as I showed in other videos you can unzip here and then put a tripod across here if you need to carry it that way you don't want to carry your tripod on the sides because as again as you do in the top shelf feature uh, this side here I think is a side that's up against your body so this is it all filled up and I still have all these extra dividers I can use so now let's go back to my studio and I'm gonna uh, put this on my back and then show you how the top shelf feature works all right guys, so back in Studio A, I have the top shelf bag on. Basically goes from your left shoulder across this way and then you swing it out this way, right? So here we go. And you do need to loosen up a little bit. So you can see 
for, for my body build type, I just think for it, it's too high, right? So you just have to remember to loosen up a little bit like this, and then you can move it to the front and you can see now it is in top shelf mode. And in the videos he shows, you know, have a camera. If you wanted to use the top shelf, like it's, it's if you're doing some kind of a sort of a panning shot like this, or just, I don't know if you want to eat lunch or something, but the, the key to this is that when you want access to your gear, you open it up like this, and now you have all your gear in front of you. So if you need to change lenses, so I'm gonna put this down because this isn't part of the system. So as I showed you, I had the X-T4 here and I needed to change the lens in the field. So this is how easy it is. You have the 10 and 24, you take this lens off, put it down, and now I have, what lens is this? This is the 16 millimeter F1.4. Put it on, put the cap away, and then you can just close this up like that. Swing it back around like this, and you're ready to shoot with this on the back here. And you'll just have to play around with the adjustment of how high or how, how, how low you want it. But if you're constantly accessing it, so you know you can be switching lenses or accessories very quickly or even cameras quickly, just have it at the height that you are comfortable with. And then you can quickly access, put your gear away, grab a new lens or new body, put this down, grab the X-Pro3, close the lid, and then swing it back like this, and you are ready to rock the Casbah. Now you do have that side access again. I just don't like side access. I do rather just have this flip forward, and especially if you're doing something more intricate like you know, putting ND filters or changing out microphones or using a wireless mic system and you need to constantly kind of adjust stuff, change batteries out. It is nice that you can just quickly, look at that quickly access your gear without having to put it on the ground, which was the only real issue I had with my low pro, pro tactic bag is that I couldn't access gear this quickly. So, I mean, this just seems like a dream if you are kind of a running gun, you don't have an assistant, and even if you do, just being able to free up both hands and be able to just grab whatever camera you need for whatever shoot you're doing and just have it all kind of like, you know, this is all just like right in front of me here and then be able to just close her up like that. And this is where Matt was saying for him, he doesn't even feel like he needs to zip it up, but if I was gonna go for a long time, then just do that. And then now it's back to sling mode. Now with all this weight, of course, sling mode probably isn't the most efficient mode to have it on. So let's just switch back over the backpack mode. So this isn't gonna be as smooth as swinging it forward. This has to move forward. You do unlock this so it comes a little bit longer. And then grab both hands, pull it back. Obviously this left side is gonna be looser because I had to adjust it for the, for the length to, to swing it forward. And then you just put this back in like this. And now you're in backpack mode. You can see over here. Like that. So as you get used to it, you know, I was a little bit clumsy, but the better, uh, you can see Matt's video on his website. He's very fast from switching the backpack to sling mode and then from sling to be able to swing it back right away. I'm still kind of getting used to it, but overall, I think this is a great bag. I love the prototype. The finished product is even nicer than the prototype. Very high quality bag. A lot of thought has been put into this. I like the square sort of shape and design. Very minimalist, but it makes best use of all the space that's in this bag here. And as I mentioned, you can put your tripod along the outside here. No room for putting pockets on the side because again, that gets in the way of the top shelf and the swing out feature. Because again, this is a side that is up against your body when you're looking at your gear. So you don't want anything blocking this side over here. And so thank you so much for watching. Like I said, I have discount code. I think you get like $20 off if you use the code, I think it's BHG20, but just whatever I, I'll put down in the description. And right now it is $100 off in this pre-order. So instead of 350 US, it is on sale right now for 250 US. I think two or three of the first batches have already sold out. And so now he's taking his fourth batch order or fourth order uh, for this bag. So thank you again, Matt and Nicole for sending this out to me. And I have some overseas trips coming up. So I think this is gonna be my main bag to take with me. And so let's just put this back on my bag, grab my camera. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon. Happy shooting.